This is Total Growth Investing, where price growth is not enough, dividend growth is not enough. We want to identify stocks, funds, and other investments that perform well in both of these measurements, because when we find them and buy them, we can beat the market over the long term. I'm back. It's been a long time since I posted a video. 2021 started well, but then went a bit crazy. I lost my mother in May and then lost my father in November, both to cancer. My mother's estate was not prepared, so that was a learning curve and a lot of work. Please, if you are watching this video, do some prep work to get your financial books in order. That's all I want to say on the topic. But now that we've started 2022, I wanted to get started on videos again. Thank you for your patience and thank you for the channel support. We are at 786 subscribers. If I can get to a regular schedule for making these videos, I think I can push that to 1000 within a few months. It's small, I know, but we gotta start somewhere. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so, and share these videos with others if you find them useful. I would love to do updates on some of the videos that I did in 2020, but with the ranking list updates, I'll probably just stick to doing research and video presentations on my top 10. They keep changing, so that should keep me plenty busy. So this video is going to take a look at the current number one ranked stock on the Total Growth Investing Ranked Watch List. The ones that float to the top are what I consider my buy list. These are the stocks that I want to look at really closely because those companies have shown over the last decade that they can and will increase their dividends with a high compound annual growth rate, a share price that has grown significantly, and a low payout ratio giving them plenty of room to grow in the future. But not everything that has numbers floating them to the top of my watch list are securities that I actually want to purchase without taking a hard look at them. The stock I'm going to look at today, actually the fund, is a good example of that. Let's take a look at Direction Technology Bull 3X Shares ETF, TECL, and its sibling, the Bear 3X Shares ETF, TECS. Direction was founded in 1997 as Potomac Funds because their offices were on the Potomac River in Alexandria, Virginia. They started using the name Direction in 2006, with the X signaling their move into leveraged index funds. So the next thing we need to explore is what is a leveraged index fund? Everyone knows what a fund is. It's a collection of securities in a basket, and the company offers shares of the basket to trade on exchanges. An index is a specific basket of securities identified by one of the financial big dogs, like MSCI or S&P. Leverage brings to mind Archimedes and his boast, Give me a place to stand and I will move the earth. The idea is to make investments through fancy financial engineering, like equity swaps, derivatives, futures contracts, rebalancing, re-indexing, etc., Honestly, I have no idea what those are. So when I'm looking at the expense ratios of some of these funds, I can see that the expertise required to balance all of these factors to achieve the goal comes at a very high price. What's the goal? The goal for a 2x leveraged fund is to double the performance return that the underlying index shows for a specific trading day. If the underlying index has a 5% return, the leveraged index fund is expected to give a 10% return. When the market falls by 2%, the leveraged fund falls 4%. A 3x leveraged fund turns a 5% gain into 15% and a 2% loss into 6%. Day after day. The math can get really crazy and several other financial YouTubers like Jake Bro, Think Finance, and Project Finance have given a really good breakdown of how they work. Conclusions are mixed whether these are good investments because while they are designed for day traders, 
there are some that have been able to ride longer term waves to good success. And if there's one sector that has seen incredible success over the last decade, it's information technology. The underlying index for TECL and TECS is the Technology Select Sector Index from S&P Dow Jones Indices. One of the ETFs based on this index is Technology Select Sector Spider ETF, XLK. So let's take a look at the performance of that fund to give us something to compare to. XLK is up over 580% over the last 10 years. Given that run, it's not surprising that TECL has seen incredible gains in price as well. Up 9,687% over the last 10 years. But does that mean that it's a worthy investment for the next 10 years, especially as a long-term investment? There's a high level of risk, and it depends on whether you believe that information technology and the components of that index are going to continue to see increases in price as we move into the mid-2020s. Given what we are seeing is the rise of blockchain and the metaverse, Honestly, I'd say the probability is high that semiconductors and the internet are going to continue to be good markets for growth. But with the value of TECL being reset every single day, an investment that sees even a small drop over a short period of time can go down quickly and then not recover. That's the danger of leveraged funds. TECL is designed for day traders who want to take advantage of short-term trends in the market. If they see things going up, they'll buy in the morning and cash out near the end of the day. If they see things going down, they'll buy into the bear and sell at the end of the day with a profit for that day. That's what these funds are designed for. They are not intended for long-term holds at all. So why did this fund rise to the top of my ranked watch list? Let's take a look at how I do the background calculations to generate the ranking scores, and I'll show you. Welcome to the back end. This is my data entry sheet. This is where I enter all of the raw data that comes from Seeking Alpha to find out what my scores are in the first place. For TECL, I have a four-year average yield of 0.42%. I find that by going to dividends, going to dividend yield, and for a fund down here, I'm just averaging the top four from 2021 through 2018. So that's 0 0.042. The next scores come from the dividend growth tab, but again, there's no raw data, so I will enter this information into the calculations and that gives me the compound annual growth rate for one year and three years. Because they skip distributions entirely between 2012 and 2016, the five year and the 10 year have no data. But I'll enter 33.29 and 109.46 into here and go on to the next one. Payout ratio, again, they don't have any data on that in Seeking Alpha, so I'll just leave it blank. Average dividend over the last couple cycles, I get that by going to dividend history and plugging in the numbers. And then I go to the Momentum tab. So these are the price performance rankings, and on the Momentum tab, you can see all the numbers are crazy high. The one year is 112.11, 914.47, 1626.67, and 9362.83. I'm not sure that anything could beat that. But just a second, let me bring up another sheet. Okay, this is the other half of how I do things. This is calculated rankings. So on this sheet, I'm taking a ranking score of each one of the columns, comparing it to all of the other stocks, over 750 of them, 
and then compiling averages of those ranking scores. This is how the TGI system works. So 33.29, which comes from that other sheet, compared to all of the other stocks on the list, is rank number 60. 109.46 is rank number 10. The 5-year and 10-year give it a real disadvantage because that's 580 because there's so many other stocks with above that in the numbers for 5 years and then 456 for the 10-year. But I average them all together and that is the ranking for compound annual growth rate for dividend growth. This is where it really wins though because for price performance 116.98 is rank number 35. 958.77 is rank number 8. 16.53 is rank number 11. And 95.07 is rank number 2. Um, here's an example that I can see right here. Another one, Raymond James Financial, actually has a higher, but that's kind of a fluke. Maybe I should check that one. I will when I get done with this. But anyway, the average ranking for price performance is number one. And then over here where everything is ranked together, it's still number one. It's 86. That's an average ranking score. And then this is the rank of those scores. And that constitutes the TGI ranking. I know this is in depth, but this is how I do it. And this is why... TECL is landing at number one. It's because as far as price performance goes, almost nothing can beat it in terms of averages. I would like to point out some fun trivia that shows direction has a sense of humor. For their oil and gas funds, the bull fund is gush and the bear fund is drip. Although I have friends in the oil industry who tells me that Drip is more often used for liquid natural gas, but whatever. For consumer discretionary bulls, they are able to claim the symbol want. <laughs> for consumer staples, they were able to grab need for the bulls and lack for the bears. For healthcare, their bull fund is cure. They also had a bear fund called sick until it liquidated in 2017. For home builders and supplies, their bull fund is Nail. They also had a bear fund called Claw until 2017. And finally, their fund based on the China CSI 300 index is Chad. Go figure. I was wondering when something like that would come up. Uh, and for people who don't get the joke, that's my name. Thanks for watching. As always, if you liked this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. This video was mostly to get back into it, and while the audio sounds like it could have used some work, I'm going to get back into videos, and this is the proof. Please also like the Facebook page, and if you'd like to talk about the TGI ranking system and the stocks at the top, please feel free to join the Facebook group as well. I know there are other social media sites out there, but one step at a time. I do this for fun, not profit. The profit comes from making good choices in investing and watching the returns roll in. Let's beat the market. Have fun. Oh, and Happy New Year.